I, I got back on a project that I sort of put away and forgot about a while back. I think this got lost when I was uh, putting together this lathe and it was after I had finished the, the little 618. Um, anyway, this is just a pulley I started making a long time ago and it's been <laughs> put away several times and forgotten about and I get frustrated at various stages of it. I started off I don't know if you can see it. You need to get the light over here a little better. See, I now have a key slot in here. Originally, the idea was I actually put a taper in this bar here. Um, and <clears throat> I didn't make the wide end long enough, or wide enough. Uh, and I was, uh, I didn't have my um, parting tool figured out well enough so it was digging in too much and anyway it caused it to spin caused the pulley to spin on the shaft so then I cut the key slot in messed around with that a bit um, I don't remember what was the problem after that but actually I might have been that might have been working out okay uh, but I didn't go as far as I saw double boost do, do the other night to where he actually went ahead and put in his set screw um, oh, I remember what it was. I didn't have the proper key stock for it, so I had to to get some of that. Um, and by the time I got it, I had already moved on to other things. So anyway, yeah, so I was watching Double Boost make a uh, pulley the other night, and he went with this method of, uh, you know, putting the slot in, putting the key in, going ahead and drilling and tapping the set screw. So I went ahead and did all that. Another idea I took from him was... He put the shaft in a, uh, a collet where I was using the, um, you know, the bench dog, the faceplate, the bench dog, and the centers. Um, and I don't think when I was doing this earlier, I owned these collets. But it's kind of a, I thought that was a good idea because I mean these collets give you really good repeatability for center, which is the whole idea of turning between centers anyway. And this makes it a little bit easier to mess with uh, than the um, the bench dogs and all. So anyway, I'm back on the project and. It's working out pretty well. The one thing I did try that was a double boost uh, idea that just didn't work on my lathe uh, simply because um, it bogged down too much is that uh, I did go ahead and grind, which is what he did, a special piece of uh, tool steel to try to just plow in there. And my belts are slipping. I've got to, I've got to work on that. But for right now, this was not doing it. So I reverted to coming in at an angle with the, um, I put the parting blade back in, and I've got this, uh, I've got the, oh, my vocabulary is failing me. You know, this part of the lathe. <laughs> uh, set at uh, 20 degrees, which, as best I can measure, is the proper, I have one pulley as a, a model. This goes on my shopsmith. So um, I've just been uh, working on one side. So I've got this side, I believe, about done. And I'm working on this side. Then I'll do this side. Then I'll flip it over, come the other way, and come in. And it uh, seems to be going OK. So anyway, I'll, uh, I'll shoot a little bit of it in action. I don't want to bore you too much with it. But that was pretty cool. Once again, Double Boost uh, inspired me to get something done. So. Appreciate it. See, even with this small cut, it wants to bog down. I gotta fix those belts.
Oh, there it is finished. Finally. A couple of little bumps that's got on it from being dropped <laughs> at various stages. But uh, that's not going to affect the operation. Tried to break these edges. Looks like I might have hit that one a little bit better, but I'm not going to chuck it all back up again. Again, that's from just sitting around in a drawer. You know, not the best finish possible, but it's pretty darn good for me. So, I'm happy with it. I'll get it mounted up on the um, shopsmith and uh, show you how it works. And so there it is in its natural habitat. the first time in a long time I've been able to run this, uh, actually the first time I'll ever have been able to run this machine across the full range. I had another one that had the original pulleys. This one, uh, the motor that came with, this was a junkyard find and the motor was scrapped and I tried to get the original pulley off of it and I broke it in the process and so I've just had a single pulley in there that was, uh, I think it was about this size, but anyway. So now I can actually switch back and forth. So there's low speed. I'll switch out the pulley real quick and come back and show you high speed. Right, so high speed. It's actually pretty high. That rattling is just some stuff I had sitting on the table over here. It's not the machine. It's actually very smooth. Which surprised me. I thought I'd have to replace the bearings in here, but I didn't. Those are the original ones. So, I'm up and running.